You're listening to NFR in the Drive, your place for NFRN, NASCAR, and motorsport news. Hello again, everybody. I'm Colin Denton with another edition of NFR in the Drive. First and foremost, thank you for your patience. I very much realize it's been a long, long wait, which is exceeding five months, to get some more NFR and racing action in. There's been a lot of stuff happening over the past few months, and I've got a big personal life change coming up. That's something you're going to notice soon enough, but I'm not going to reveal it yet. That is something you'll find out later on. And there are some things that have been happening behind the scenes as well that we're going to see coming up. That's all stuff for later. Tonight, we have a race. Now, it's obviously just the Amateur Cup Series race. We just wanted to get something out there as the Elite Cup Series race will be out later on. And we'll have a th throwback unveil in a few moments. That is going to be a big thing to see because the Elite Cup Series paints have not been seen yet. But we're going to start off with a few headlines and results. A wild Sunday at Chicagoland that led to some intense weather and some intense racing saw its first first-time cup winner of the season. Alex Bowman is going to be a victor in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. He is locked into the playoffs, currently running ninth in points. Kyle Larson just came up short once again in the runner-up position. In Formula One, Max Verstappen earned the victory. It took a long-winded decision to officially declare him the winner, but he did come out on top. In the end, Charles Leclerc and Valtteri Bottas end up with the podium. And in the Well and Euro Series, Elite 1, Loris Hesemans ends up with the victory. Setien's Longin takes the points lead as Alan Day has a horrible weekend and loses the points lead. And in Elite 2, it's Lasse Sorensen who gets the victory. And Giorgio Maggi, second place, has the points lead over there. Now, the last time we broadcasted, the Amateur Cup and Truck Series Headed to the road courses, both on different sides of the country. Let's go ahead and recap those races. In the Amateur Cup Series, it was green flag time at Mirage 2. The second time we've been to this complex, but the first time on this particular track. Little off-course excursion for Kenny Knox early on. Gets in the dust storm. John Gilbert turns him around. Goes off the front of Kyle Bachelia as well. Later on, at the bottom part of the racetrack, Colin Lindsay and Anthony Lopez tangle down there and they get stuck in the dry grass. Problems for Chris Harley, multiple pit stops, and it turns out it looks like there was a fuel pickup issue in multiple race cars. And that created a lot of problems. John Gilbert plows into the back of AJ Jones. Mike Simpson run right into the back from James Smith, crunched up that race car. You can see there's just a traffic jam of cars that are getting stuck going up the hill. A little bit more contact there between Kenny Knox and Austin Rogers. And then this was the winning move. Getting stuck behind Kenny Knox, Kyle Law gets passed up by Jesse McConaugh, makes the swift move to the outside, and that is going to send McConaugh to his first career victory in the NFRN, and he is just a part-timer. He runs full-time trucks. So a great victory for McConaugh. Kyle Law would have to settle for second. That's three straight top two finishes. Jacob Rose, Eric Van Arsdale, and 19 car fan round out the top five. Meanwhile, at the front of the point standings, Connor Mays leads, and Chris Harley has officially locked himself into the playoffs despite his bad run. Meanwhile, the Truck Series went racing at Mayville up in New York. Addison Steinbeck and Luke Evans swept the front row as part-timers, and this would be a relatively clean race. There would be a little bit of off-course excursions right there, right off the long straightaway. But here's where everything went a little crazy. Addison Steinbeck stays out and the rest of the field comes down for a pit stop. When Steinbeck pits the next lap, he gets snookered. Luke Evans and Justin McConaugh able to get around. And that is going to set Steinbeck back. But even bigger, Barry Watson, who's a little bit tight on points right now, has to come down and serve a stop and go penalty. Luke Evans would be able to hold off the rest of the field. And that would make two part-timers on the weekend to win in the NFRN, Luke Evans, Jesse McConaugh, Addison Steinbeck, Adam Kuhn, and Daniel Voyles all end up taking the top five. Three drivers clinch their way into the playoffs, Mike Simpson, Tyler Reed, and Jim Fowler. Now besides the racing, let's knock out the thing that everyone wants to take a peek at. It is throwback time. Now the full-timers of the Elite and the Amateur Cup Series are going to be rocking some old-style schemes. We're going to start off with the Amateur Cup Series. Now, this is going to be repetitive for those that are in the NFR and Discord. If you're not on the Discord, which you really should be, we put those throwbacks out there early, so everyone over there has already seen these throwbacks, but 
everyone's going to see the Elite throwbacks for the first time, so let's take a look at all those now. We will be doing this in numeric order, and starting with the Amateur Cup Series, Sparky the Sun Devil, no specific design, but is utilizing some old throwback logos for the sponsor Arizona State Sun Devils. Jay Jefferson and Harry Gantz 1994 scheme. He drove the number 33 from 1981 to 1994, won his last race in 1992. AJ Jones will be piloting the number 4 Sterling Marlin drove in the 1990s. Five Super Speedway wins in this car, including back-to-back -back Daytona 500s, as well as a win at Darlington. Justin Roadback will be piloting Terry Labonte's number 5 from the 1990s. Labonte drove for Hendrick Motorsports from 1994 to 2005 to 12 victories and a 1996 title. TJ Smith is piloting a Richard Petty 1986 car. Petty had crashed his number 43 in practice. He got a ride with US Racing for one race at Charlotte in 1986, finished 38th in this number 6 car. Andy Coleman will carry the paint of Ryan Newman's 2008 Daytona 500 victory. Jack Freeman is throwing back to 1992 Jeff Gordon's number 1 Bill Davis Racing Car in the Bush Grand National Series, three victories driving for that team. Kyle Bichelia will pilot a scheme for Kevin Harvick, 2013 truck, Fall Martinsville race where he got into an infamous scuffle with Ty Dillon. Jacob Rose's car will resemble the 1975 Bobby Allison scheme, the Matador, three victories driving that car for Penske Racing twice at Darlington. Kyle Law will have a Jason Keller 2005 scheme McDonald's as a sponsor, one season driving for Team Renzi Motorsports, ninth in standings that year. Ray Chapman will have an early 1990s Ken Schrader scheme driving for Hendrick Motorsports, earned a total of three victories while on that race team. John Gilbert will throw back to Tony Raines' 1997. This Warwick Motorsports truck won four times, including twice at I-70 in Missouri. Alexander Rose's scheme will be Donnie Allison, 1969. The number 27 car drove to Victory Lane at Charlotte. Chase Baldwin will throw back to Alan Kowicki from 1986, a car originally owned by Bill Terry, which eventually became uh, Kowicki's team. Griffin Lynn will go back to Lee Petty, 1960. That was a year that Petty earned five victories. Here's our Arvin Alonso goes back to Tim Richmond's 1980 scheme, driving for Blue Max Racing, got two victories in that 27 car. Noah Kim is going to drive a 1996 Michael Waltrip scheme running for Wood Brothers Racing. Earned a best standing finish of 14th in 96, driving for that team. Austin Rogers will go to Tony Stewart's 1998 scheme when he drove on a part-time basis for Joe Gibbs Racing in the Bush Series. He was twice a runner-up and never was victorious in that race car. Al Callaway's scheme will be Todd Bodine in 2001 off-ride at Atlanta for Haas Carter Motorsports that season, which finished 14th. Chris Harley will go to 1971 with this Bobby Allison scheme. It was a race-winning car at Bowman Gray for Melvin Joseph. Donnie Moore's scheme will be Ricky Craven out of 1998 part-time Hendrick Motorsports ride. Joey Radcliffe will drive the 1961 Bob Burdick scheme. Burdick was a race winner at Atlanta that season, made a few cup starts during that era. Ryan Kendall will throw back to Kenny Wallace, the 1999 scheme, while he drove for Andy Petrie Racing. Shane Borland's throwback scheme will be Greg Biffle's 2001 car from the Bush Grand National Series. First two full seasons of the Bush Series, Biffle earned nine wins during that time span. TJ Ball will throw back to AJ Foyt 1964, a Daytona winning race car. Dwayne Calloway will throw back to Carl Adams 1975. Adams attempted the full season that year driving for Richard Mummer. Eric Van Arsdale is going to the late 1970s Daryl Waltrip scheme. Had Gatorade on the car and Affleck this time around. 25 wins driving for DeGard Motorsports. Jake Thomas will throw back to Benny Parsons his mid 1970s scheme, the number 72. 12 wins for DeWitt Racing for Parsons. Anthony Lopez will go to Mark Martin's 1989 scheme. Martin was a race winner at Rockingham. He ended up finishing third in points that season. Kenny Knox will drive a car resembling Roman Kalzinski's 1987 car. Kalzinski, a California native, made a lone comp cup attempt, a DNQ at Riverside for Spears Manufacturing. Jason Thales will throw back to Joe Rutman, 1996 and 97 scheme, resulted in five wins in 97. Craig Martin's scheme will be a throwback to 1980, Janet Guthrie. This was a Daytona 500 attempt race car and it resulted in an 11th place finish. Connor Mays' scheme resembles Dick Trickle's 1989 
ride. Driving for Stabola Brothers Racing. Got six top fives that year, and now it's his best points year in Cup. Robert Harrison will throw back to Dave Marcus, 2002. His final start in the Daytona 500 ended up finishing 42nd that year with a mechanical problem. Colin Lindsay's got a bit of a joint throwback. Cale Yarbrough, 1979-1980 is the scheme. David Green, 1995 is the number. Yarbrough earned 45 victories in three straight titles, driving for Junior Johnson. And the final car in the Amateur Cup Series stable, 19 car fan, will throw back to Carl Edwards, 2004, when he earned six wins in the Rouse number 99 truck. And without hesitation, let's jump into the Elite Cup Series throwbacks that everyone's seen for the first time. Jeff Burton's 2007-2008 scheme will adorn Julio Caesar's ride. Burton earned four total victories driving for Richard Childress Racing. Rampage will run the Cole Trickle Days of Thunder number 46 scheme. In reality, it was driven by Greg Sachs for Hendrick Motorsports to help with filming of the movie. Rambo's scheme will go to 1969. John Sears earned 17 top fives that season but never got to victory lane. Mitchell Mark's car resembles a Kale Yarbrough owned car in 1997 that found one victory in Cup with John Andretti as the driver at Daytona. Johnny Gardner will throw back to Brad Kozlowski's 2005 truck scheme. That was a family owned team that had a best finish of 7th at Daytona. Aiden Shepard will go to Lenny Pond 1976. That is a kind of a sponsor throwback. That was Pond's first full time season and he finished 5th in standings. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. will throw back to Peter Jansen, 1978-1979. Jansen was a recurring contender in the Australian Touring Cars Championship, and that's where his scheme is inspired from. Jack Porkins will throw back to Rick Mast from the 1990s, driving for Precision Products Racing, and Skull has come on board, Porkins, for a one-time primary sponsorship. They are also an associate sponsorship otherwise. John Arndt will throw back to John West Townley, 2015. That was the year that uh, Townley earned his only truck victory, that year at Las Vegas. David Davidson will throw back to Bill Elliott, 1998. That was the year that Elliott was fielding his own team. Bruno De Barros will field a scheme that resembles an IndyCar. Paul Tracy from the 1990s. Tracy earned five victories, driving the number 12 for Penske Racing, and then went on to a few other numbers as well. Nick Smith's throwback is going to go to Bobby Labonte, late 1990s, early 2000s. All 21 of Labonte's victories came driving for Joe Gibbs Racing, and this was one of the schemes that he got it done in. William Brock will throw back to the Dale Earnhardt GM Goodwrench car. Many of his wins came driving for Richard Childress Racing from 1984 to 2001. Dominic Carranza will field a Jeff Gordon early to mid-2000s throwback. Gordon had 93 wins in total and spent his entire career at Hendrick, and also this car raced in the All-Star race earlier this season for the NFRN. Stuart Gradden's throwback goes to Bobby Allison, 1968. The Bondi Lung car got top fives at Riverside and Daytona. Eric Monaco will throw back to 2002. Tony Stewart's one-off race truck at Richmond that he won in, and Monaco has come on board as a sponsor for this race as well. A Wendell Scott throwback will be on board Jack Krause from the 1960s. Scott earned his lone cup win, driving the number 34. Caleb Campbell will throw back to AJ Foyt's IndyCar team. Foyt is 44 times a winner as an owner, but 35 times driving the car, so nine times when he is not driving the car. Cody Hagen is going to throw back to Kyle Petty's early 1990s game, the Mellow Yellow Car. Petty earned six victories driving for Sabco Racing. Noah Cars will be in a Jerry Nadeau 2002 scheme, a short lived stint for Petty Enterprises. Of course, that car was not very short lived, but Jerry Nadeau in the car was. Tyler Markell will go to 2011 Jimmy Johnson scheme. Obviously, Johnson a seven-time champion for Hendrick Motorsports in the Cup Series. Brad Stover's also kind of doing a little bit of a combination throwback. It's Michael Waltrip's 2001 scheme and his 2006 number. Waltrip earned four restricted plate wins for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Amethyst Astley will have a mid to late 1990s Jason Keller car. Keller earned 10 victories while driving the number, number 57 in the Bush Series. Stephen Willie will throw back to a Rusty Wallace Racing scheme from 2009. That team won once in its latest stint, never in the number 62 car though. NASCAR Fan 19 will throw back to Elliott Sadler, 2004. Sadler earned two of his three career cup wins that season. Dale Jr. Fan 88-83 will throw back to Neil Bonnet from 1985. Bonnet earned three wins driving the number 12 for Junior Johnson. 
Jonathan Brains' car will resemble Bobby Hillen's 1995 U.S. Air Car. Hillen was a Jasper Motorsports driver with a best finish of ninth. Philip Fry will throw back to Martin Truex Jr. 2005. That was the second of Truex Jr.'s two championships in the Bush Series. 12 total wins those seasons. Jake Baskinger is throwing back to Ricky Rudd for 2001. That's when he drove for Robert Yates Racing. His last three victories came for Yates in 01 and 02. Eli Bright's going to throw it back to 1999 Dale Jarrett's championship race car. Jarrett earned 29 total victories driving for Robert Yates Racing. Reese Butcher will throw back to Ken Schrader from 1987. That is a Don Levy racing car. Gerardo Ron's scheme will resemble that of the number 99 Carl Edwards 2014 scheme. Edwards earned 23 total victories in cup with Roush Fenway Racing. Noah Ponser will throw back to Kevin Harvick 2004. Harvick earned 23 victories over his tenure with Richard Childress Racing. Adam Mundinger will throw back to Kurt Busch in his 0607 scheme. Busch earned a total of 10 victories for Penske Racing. The other JR will throw back to the mid-1960s David Pearson schemes, where Pearson earned 27 victories for Owens Racing. And our final race card, Ryan Maiden throws back to Tim Richmond, 1981, an early race car for him. That was a best finish of 6th at Talladega. That is all of the full-timer throwbacks competing at Peoria Motor Speedway, and a few part-timers will also have some alternate schemes based on the car that they're driving. Now, looking ahead to the Elite Cup Series race, there are just two events before the playoffs. Same with the Amateur Cup Series, obviously. Let's look at the Speedway stats for those trying to make it into the top 16, because it's been quite a while since we went to an intermediate track. And when you look at these stats, Brad Stover and Bruno De Barros are really taking control of the Speedways this season. Now, we've only had three of them, but you can see they both eclipse a top 10 in average finish. Julio Caesar also with that mark. Brad Stover and Bruno De Barros, though, they have top fives to go along with their top 10s, and Stover has top 10 in every intermediate track so far this season, and that's important for him because he is down to 15th in points now, and he was doing so great to start off the season, but now he has to build those points back up, so this is going to be a huge make-or-break deal for him racing here at Peoria. Bruno De Barros just behind him in standings, so, relatively speaking, he also has to do well as well. You can see some of the best veterans that we have in this field right now are William Brock and John Arndt. Clearly, Brock already has his victory, and he is safe into the playoffs. But in a total of 12 intermediate starts, he's top 10 in six of those. John Arndt has done the same amount of races and top 10 in five. As far as his point situation is, he might be able to clinch today just by finishing the race. But we'll see if he can go for a victory while he's at it. Now to cut away from some NFRN coverage, it's pretty easy to notice that since the last edition of The Drive, we have missed half of the NASCAR season. So we need to take a look at the surprises and the disappointments of the year. Let's start off by looking at the Monster Energy Cup Series. Now I don't think it's too much of a surprise to see the championship four from last season make up four of the top five spots. And you also throw in Brad Keselowski in there at third place, or at least tied for third with Harvick. But I think one of the biggest surprises this season is the lack of parity. We've gotten so many victories from Joe Gibbs Racing and Team Penske that Stuart Haas Racing has yet to earn a victory. And that is just a bit surprising that there's been a little less parity among not even just the teams, but the drivers. Because you condense all those victories in the what was six and now seven, thanks to Alex Bowman. There is a lot of open spots on points still, but I gotta believe that Alex Bowman was one of the Bigger surprises to be that guy that broke through and got rid of that streak that the two teams were putting up. I know that Chase Elliott won at Talladega. That obviously stopped that from happening. But when you go to an intermediate racetrack, the fact that Alex Bowman was the one that was able to put together the performance and Kyle Larson almost got it done, that is a bit surprising. But now we are up to seven drivers that have won races so far this season. They're essentially locked into the playoffs. We still have nine spots left to go. Now, coming into this episode, I thought I was going to have a little bit of a different conversation, but suddenly, with a bad day for both Daniel Suarez and Clint Boyer, they find themselves on the cut line. That is very surprising. Now, let's be honest. I did say at the beginning of the year preseason that one of my predictions was going to be that Daniel Suarez would miss the playoffs. I thought that I was going to come into this saying I'm going to have to retract myself on that, which, I mean, I can't take it back necessarily but say that I'm probably going to be wrong because Suarez was looking so good and that SHR equipment 
But then suddenly this bad day comes along and he's only 18 points above the cut line and Clint Boyer is only 15 above. This is going to be really concerning for a team that had all four of their race cars in the playoffs last season. You look at guys that are underneath. You got Eric Jones. That's probably the biggest surprise in terms of the equipment. Ryan Newman, a veteran. Obviously, it's uh, Roush Fenway, but still, he was just one point above coming into Chicagoland. And then Jimmy Johnson had a great day. Bumped himself up to 14th. William Byron's putting together an impressive performance as well. Chad Knauss really improving that driver in his sophomore season. He is up to 12th place. We will see how this all shakes up in these final nine or so races. As it relates to the Xfinity series, there is not much to explain here because it seems like at this point that the playoffs are essentially set. All they're really racing for at this point is to gain more points for, well, getting in the top 10 and getting those season end points, but also grabbing victories. And there haven't been a lot of guys that have gotten wins because they've all been hogged by these top three guys, Reddick, Custer, Bell have accumulated 11 wins this season. Michael Annette got the Daytona win. There's been a couple of cup wins scattered in there. Frankly, there's been a lot of Xfinity wins by those drivers, even when some of the cup guys come in to the races. So great runs by these top three. But yeah, looking at the standings, you basically know who's the top 12 going into the playoffs. Now it's a matter of how does that shake up? We're basically waiting for those final seven races of the season. I think the big thing that really cut this one apart is the fact that Ross Chastain moved over to truck points, and then that meant that there was no guy on that 13th threshold that could really contend. And I know that it was going to be a little bit more difficult for Chastain to win in the four car, or maybe even get those points, but at the same time, he was that last hope, and he even had some chances in the 10 car as well that could have been resulting in victories, and then he went ahead and switched his points declaration that basically wipes out any chance that we had of separating someone else in the top 12 and so 98 points in the cut line I doubt there's going to be any changes except maybe within that top 12 for position looking at the truck series it's a little bit of a tighter situation now we know that Ross Chastain has won a race he's not within the top 20 in points yet even though that should be safe and because he's not there that is why this top 10 looks the way it is Technically, it should read that Todd Gilliland would be out at the moment because Johnny Sawyer has won. Ross Chastain's going to bump up as well. That is going to leave some guys on the outside looking in. To walk you through it kind of verbally, we have four different truck uh, championship competing winners so far this season. And so that would technically mean that Ben Rhodes is the one that is above the cut line. Just a matter of fact that there's some guys that are outside the top eight that have won that that list is not the way it is but yeah we gotta pay attention to who is going to be on the outside when it comes down to these final races Harrison Burton and Todd Gilliland I know Burton's a rookie but Gilliland in his second season a little bit concerning just a matter of fact that if KBM can't put themselves in the playoffs that is going to be a big disappointment for that team all right it has been a long wait for this racing to happen let's not waste any more time just a few quick notices about the league before we hit the track for those that want to get involved in the league and are not yet doing that, there is signups to attempt qualifying for the NFRN truck and NFRN open modified races. That deadline is going to be two days away from now, Wednesday, July 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We want to make sure that we start to get the season a little bit quicker. So that is why we're bumping this deadline up. It's op only open to drivers, not currently a member of the NFRN. We have a few current new entries for race nine just to clear it up. That is not the next race in the Truck Series schedule that has been run, but it's not been broadcasted yet. So this is the race after the next truck broadcast. And if you don't see your name on this list and you signed up like in January or something like that, which was the last deadline, that probably means you're in race number eight. This is essentially your last opportunity to sign up for the NFRN 24-hour race because signups are going to close down when the drive for the next Elite Cup Series broadcast takes place. There is going to be a link in the description that will give you the easiest pathway into signing yourself up for this race. There is a way to sign up as a team, but there is a way to sign up as just a driver that will be on standby and assigned a team at the time that the signups close. So 
the link down in the description the video that is what you want to watch to make sure that you will be competing as in this event these are some of the drivers that have already signed up either as a team or as a standby driver it has expanded since the last time we did an episode because we had a little reminder video a little bit ago but this is the current state of things and if you are not a part of it right now click on that link in the description go find out how you can get involved and as always, the easiest way to get information is to join the NFRN Discord, which is in conjunction with the ASCA League. That link is also down in the description. Go ahead and join it for some news and updates and to get involved with the community. So it is time to go throwback racing with the Amateur Cup Series at Peoria. As mentioned, the Elite Cup Series race will run at a later date yet to be determined. We will not foresee that with another episode of The Drive. It will be a standalone premiere. So it's time to narrow down the contenders to make the playoffs in the Amateur Cup Series. Enjoy the race, and for NFRN and RVN, my name is Colin Denton. Good night, good riddance. Now, now.